Okay, we're going to do some examples for lesson 10.4 now. So, quick reminder of our theorems that we've talked about. We said that an inscribed angle equals half of its intercepted arc, where we can reverse that and say an inscribed angle is double, sorry, an intercepted arc is double its inscribed angle. We also had a theorem that said if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse has to be the diameter. If a triangle is inscribed in a circle and one side is a diameter, then that triangle has to be a right triangle. We had a theorem that said if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, they have to be congruent to each other. And then finally we had a theorem that said if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles must be supplementary, and that can be reversed if the opposite angles are supplementary in a quadrilateral then the quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle. So I got five examples of doing some algebra using these concepts, okay? So here we go, first one. <coughs> Excuse me, three X minus two is our angle. Our arc AC is 116 degrees. Okay, there's two ways you can look at doing this. I'm gonna do this one, this method, and the other one, the next method. So we know that the angle is half of the arc. So I'm gonna start by taking my 116 divided by two and getting 58 degrees. Since the arc is 116, the angle must be 58. Turns into a pretty easy algebra problem. Three X minus two equals 58. I add two to both sides. Three X equals 60. Divide by three, X equals 20. I do not need to put a label on this. It is not units, it is not a length. Don't put inches, feet, anything like that. It would be a part of an angle, so we have degrees, but there's already a degree symbol here, so we don't need to label this at all, so my answer is x equals 20. Pretty simple. Okay, let's look at the next one. Similar concept, but we're gonna solve it a slightly different way. Okay, go ahead, copy it down anytime you need to. Pause, copy, and keep moving, all right? If you wanna try solving this one on your own right away, that's fine, otherwise I will do the work over here off to the side. All right, once again, our angle is half of our arc. The problem is that this says 19x plus 11, and if I want to cut those in half, I'm either going to get decimals, 9.5x plus 5.5, or I'm going to get fractions, 19 over 2 times x plus 11 over 2 times, uh, and, you know, sometimes we just don't like working with fractions and decimals. Sometimes we have to, there's no way around it, but if there is a way around it, sometimes it makes it easier. So instead of cutting this in half, Remember, we can take the angle and double it to get out to here. So if I take that, that says 11x minus 8 down there, if you can't see it very well. So if I take the angle, 11x minus 8, and I double it, I multiply it by 2, then it needs to equal the arc, which is 19x plus 11. A little bit of distributive property here. 22x minus 16 equals 19x plus 11. We subtract that 19x. Cancels over there, we get 3x minus 16 equals 11. We add the 16. Cancels here, we get 3x equals 27. And finally we divide by three and we get x equals nine. We don't put a label on it because it's not a length. We already have degree symbol here and here so I do not need it on the nine. Now, this one I'm gonna check, make sure it makes sense. So 11 times nine, what is 11 times nine? That's 99. 99 minus eight gives me 91 degrees. Okay, let's come up here, 19 times nine. 19 times nine is 171. 171 plus 11 is 182 degrees. Is 91 half of 182? If the answer is yes, then you did it right. If the answer is no, then you made a mistake somewhere and you need to try it again, okay? So we could have said 11x minus eight equals this over two, done the reducing, the fractions, the decimals, whatever, just makes it a little bit harder. If you put this over one equals this over two and cross multiply, you'd be right back to this anyways, okay? So this is a little bit easier than working with the decimals and the fractions. Okay, third example. All right, so what do we got here? We have an inscribed quadrilateral, and it looks like, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see those nice and easy. All right, so I have 11y minus 40. I have 20x plus two, and it looks kinda like a 12 on the camera. I'm not sure what it looks like to you guys, but 20x plus two. 
7y plus 4 and 15x plus 3. So go ahead and take a look at all of those. And if you want to try to solve it right away, do it. Otherwise, at least copy it down, then come back, pay attention, and let's see what we got. Okay? So, all right, you should have had time to copy it by now. So keep in mind, what does our theorem tell us? Our theorem tells us that if a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle, and this is inscribed in a circle because every single corner of that quadrilateral is touching the circle. If a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles must be supplementary. Opposite angles must be supplementary. All right, here we go. 11y minus 40 and 7y plus 4 must be supplementary. That means they must add to equal 180 degrees. That's not too difficult to set up. 11y minus 40 plus 7y plus 4 equals 180 degrees. Okay, I can solve that. Like terms, I've got an 11y and a 7y. They're both positive, so I'm going to add them together and get 18y. I have a negative 40 and a positive 4. Okay, they're different signs, so we're actually going to subtract in our mind and think 36. This one is larger than this one, so we take the sign of this one and get negative 36 equals 180. We add 36 to both sides. This cancels. We get 18y equals 216. We divide by 18 and we get y equals 12. I don't need a label on it. It's not a length. And we already have a degree symbol here. And we already have a degree symbol up here. Okay, so what about these two? Well, I showed you what was going on, so why don't you go ahead and try those two real quick. Remember, this is a 20x plus 2 and a 15x plus 3. All right, hopefully you tried a little bit with that. If you haven't, seriously. Pause the video, try the problem, do it on your own, see if you can come up with the right answer. Here we go. 15x plus 3 plus 20x plus 2 equals 180. Like terms, 35x plus 5 equals 180. Subtract the 5. Cancels. 35 equals 175. Divide by 35. X equals 5. Okay, you can always check these, plug stuff back in. Let's try that real quick on this one. 15 times 5 is 75. 75 plus 3 is 78 degrees. 20 times 5 is 100. 100 plus 2 is 102 degrees. What is 78 plus 102? Well, it's 180. All right, we could also check that with the Y and the 12. It's going to work, right, because we did it right. All right, fourth example. We're almost done. Okay, this one. Zoom out a tiny bit here. All right, so what does it look like? It looks like we have a, I'll turn it this way so you can see it better, a right triangle. Uh, well, hold on. Is it a right triangle? I don't know. It's a triangle inscribed in a circle. It's a diameter. It's that dot there, center of the circle going through it. So yes, it is a right triangle. All right. If a triangle is inscribed in a circle and one side is a diameter, then it is a right triangle and the diameter is the hypotenuse. That means that we know this angle must equal 90 degrees. This is a pretty easy algebra problem. 8a plus 18 equals 90. Subtract 18. 8a equals 72, divide by 8, a equals 9. Don't need a degree symbol, I already have it right there, a equals 9. All right, last example, this one's a little harder. Some of you, I know you do this, you look at an example and go, oh, we already did one like that, I don't need to copy this one down. I'm telling you this one's different, you're going to want to stay with me. This algebra is more difficult than the first one we did that looked like this. All right, first one that we looked like this, that we looked at, that looked like this. Um, let's go back to that one real quick. It was this one. We added these two angles that equal to 180. We added these two angles that equal 180. Well. Same idea, we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, so I'm going to add my opposite angles and they're going to equal 180. And I'm going to add my opposite angles and they're going to equal 180. So let's look at what that looks like. You can't see this, it says 12x plus 12, 9x minus 8, 8y minus 8, 
and 10y plus 16. All right, so opposite angles have to be supplementary. So let's start with this one, 12x plus 12. Plus, what's opposite of that? Well, it's coming over here, 8y minus 8 equals 180. Now, what's different about this one than the one we did back here? Well, when I wrote these ones back here, I had like terms, 18y. And I had like terms, 35x. Do I have like terms? No. I got an x and a y, I can't do anything with it. We cannot solve this. Two variables, one equation cannot be solved. Doesn't mean we can't solve the problem, it just means we need a second equation. So what's the second equation? Well, I've got these angles here, right? 9x minus 8 plus 10y plus 16 equals 180. Now I have two equations and two variables. So let's do a little bit of simplifying here. I'm going to get my like terms with my positive 12 and my negative 8. Here I'm going to get my negative 8 and my positive 16. So it's going to look like this. 12x plus 8y plus 4 equals 180. And then on this one it's going to say 9x plus 10y. Got my negative 8 and my positive 16. So plus 8 equals 180. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides here. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides here. So now I have 12x plus 8y equals 176. 9x plus 10y equals 172. How do we solve that? That should look familiar. That looks like an Algebra 1 problem. All right, Algebra 1, system of equations, x's and y's, substitution. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look like substitution is going to work very nicely. Substitution, we usually wanted one of these coefficients to be a 1, because then I could just say, you know, y equals, and I could bring this over, 176 minus whatever, and substitute it in the other one. That's not going to work very well. Well, what if I divide all these by 8? That would give it a 1 and a 22, but that's going to be a decimal, and then I'd have to deal with decimals. All right, we don't want to do that. Substitution, elimination was the other one, sometimes called linear combination, okay? Elimination. Anyone remember how to do elimination? Man, Mr. Oates. I haven't done this algebra in a while. Yeah, some of you complain about geometry and tell me you're better at algebra. So here's your chance to prove it. Do that right there <coughs> before I explain to you how you do it. Okay? Now, for those of you who have forgotten how to do elimination, I'm going to explain it. This number right here and this number right here need to be exactly the same number with one small modification. One of them needs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative. Or this number right here and this number right here need to be the exact same number, just one of them needs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative. I don't care which one you pick. So let's say you pick the x's. That's the example I'm going to do, so if you want to pick the x's that's fine. Okay, 9 and 12. All right, 9, if I do some multiples of 9, 9, 18, 27, 36. Why would I pick 36? Because 12 can also become 36. 12 times 3. All right, if I was going to use the 8 and the 10, I'd need to make them both 40. 8 times 5 gives me 40. 10 times 4 gives me 40. All right, so up here, I need to multiply this by 3. I need to multiply this by 4. It's going to give me a 36 here and a 36 here. But remember, one of them needs to be negative, and I don't care which one. I'm going to make it this one right here. Multiply 3 times everything. Multiply negative 4 times everything. Well, what does that give me? It gives me 36x. I'm going to move up over here. Okay, 36x plus 24y equals what in the world is 3 times 176? That's 528. Okay, negative 4 times everything, negative 36x, negative 40y equals negative 688. Alright, so now I've got this. Now why do we call it elimination? Because when we do that correctly, these things, I'm going to combine these, and I'm going to combine these, and I'm going to combine these. That's why it's sometimes called linear combination. This is a line, this is a line, and I'm combining them. <clears throat> but as I combine these, these cancel each other out. And these give me negative 16y. And these give me negative, what do they give me? It looks like maybe a negative 160. I think that's what it looks like. And I divide by negative 16 and negative 16 and I get y equals 10. 
Okay, halfway there, except I've done most of the hard work. Now you could go back to these two equations and you could eliminate this by multiplying by five and four and one of them would have to be negative again or, easier way, take this 10, plug it into one of these two. Okay, let's do this one. So 12x plus eight and instead of the y I'm going to put 10 equals 176. 12x plus 80 equals 176. If I subtract that 80, I get 12x, that cancels, equals 96. I'm running out of room at the bottom of my paper, so I'm gonna come over here and do the division. 12x equals 96 divided by 12 divided by 12x equals eight. Now how in the world do I know if I got this right? Take both of those numbers, the eight and the 10, and I plug them back in up here. We'll do that real quick and we're done. So eight times 10 is 80. 80 minus eight is 72 degrees. Right here, uh, where's the other one with the Y? Here it is, 10 times 10 is 100. 100 plus 16 is 116 degrees. Remember the X was eight, right? So nine times eight is 72. 72 minus eight is 64 degrees. X was eight. 12 times eight is 96. 96 plus 12 is 108 degrees. Remember opposite angles are supposed to be supplementary. 108 plus 72 is 180. 116 plus 64 is 180. Yes, it works. We're done. Bunch of algebra. Those of you who like algebra, you should enjoy this. If you don't like algebra, I'm sorry. You'll have to get over it because you're going to do a lot of it.